Should we go and put these tubes on the table or? Wherever you want to go, Ed. Wherever you feel like you want to go. So we just had Tech come by and check out the car and give it a cert on the cage. Super excited, it's awesome. And now Ed's here actually talk a little bit about how to properly fit uh, the bars and stuff like that and how they, you know, how he notches everything and gets ready to weld in. So let's go talk to Ed. What's up, Yo, Ed? What up? Fancy seeing you here. So uh, where do you want to set this up then? You want to do it right here? You want to yeah, go Yeah, I think we can do it right here. Yeah, I think, you know, it's a good opportunity to talk a little bit about tube notching, you know, and fitting. People out there want to do their own stuff. A lot of the tools are real accessible now. But, I mean, this is an important uh, topic for me uh, is, is how tubes are fitted properly. This is inch and three quarter. 090 wall tube and when you notch it you'll notch it with an inch and three quarter hole saw you know major diameter is inch and three quarters so it really thins the edge of the tube all the way out to the edge if you were to take that tube I mean that looks pretty cool right mm -hmm. but you know if you start welding that around you're not welding at um, your 090, 090 095 wall thickness or whatever is required you're actually welding on this paper thin portion. So what we do is we grind that back, sand it, grind it, flap wheel, whatever you have available. So then, you know, all the way around, it's back to the full wall thickness. So when that, when that butts up against, um, you know, wherever you're landing that tube, you know, you're welding the full wall thickness. So, I mean, that's the most important thing to start. Then you can get as crazy as you want with prepping. Uh, so you can see the, you can see the end of the tube here is sort of uh, um, cleaned off here. That's this kind of grayish brown or whatever, uh, diff however the, the tube's manufactured. Uh, that's mill scale. It's kind of just a byproduct of the manufacturing process. You want to get that off, you know, the best you can without like sanding, you know, a bunch of material off the tube because then it won't be the true wall thickness anymore. You know, some scotch Brite or you know, doubled over, you know, a piece of uh, sandpaper or whatever, you know, you just kind of, you know, work it back and forth, you know, and clean it up. And the same goes for where you're landing your tube. So you want, you know, the flat section to be nice and clean and prepped. You know, you can wipe it all down with some kind of a degreaser, acetone or something. That looks you know, fresh. That's the most ideal scenario you can have. It's ground down, so you have the full wall thickness and your tubes are prepped and your landing is prepped and you can weld that. It gets highlighted most when you're TIG welding and you know you can take it a step further if you're having some contamination issues and which is prepping the inside of the tube also. Whoa! Yeah you got the unprepped and you got the fully like cleaned up ready to go. Yeah so you have you know some mill scale also on the inside of the tube. So the mill scale is for shipping so it doesn't corrode? No, I mean, when this is like, uh, when they're forming it and making the material, you know, this is just a byproduct of that. Oh, okay. You know, it's, uh, and it's something, you know, they'll add certain type of irons and things to make it not stick to whatever they're forming it to. If okay. It's a flat plate or a tube or, or so on. But a little bit of extra time in, you know, cleaning up your notches, you know, taking the mill scale off really goes a long way. If you TIG weld it straight over the mill scale, you know onto your onto another landing that has mill scale on it you know as opposed to you know a clean tube to a clean landing uh, you can't compare the just the quality of the weld and the aesthetics don't want to be welding on less than the wall thickness that makes sense awesome <laughs> right on thank you ed so now ed's going to talk about the layout of the cage and why things are where they are, and how he put it in the car, and how he did a great job, and how my floors in my car are actually trash. But anyways, enough of that. So NHRA was just out here, my good buddy Pat. So he put the sticker on here, the car's certain now for 850s. I hope to see this car go that fast. Oh, right, John? Let's just get it down the track first, buddy. <laughs> but yeah, it'd be great to go that fast. So this is your, uh, your basic 850 cage. This is a main hoop. You know, there's an Art Morrison cage. It was pre-bent, uh, not notched, but you know, super happy with how it fit and, you know, the layout of the cage. You know, we'd like this to be as close to the B-pillar as possible. That's, that's really close. 
you know, a lot of uh, prefabricated cages don't fit as well, so I was pretty happy with that. So, you know, your main hoop, we want it, you know, as far back from the driver's head area and close to the B pillar as possible, but, you know, not far enough where we can't weld the door bars 100%. And these front, you know, A pillar bars, you know, they tucked up really high and tight um, all the way up against the dash here. Um, and, you know, they provided this windshield bar with two bends in it, which, you know, landed perfectly. So this cage has a few optional bars. So this uh, dash bar right here is optional. Uh, it's not necessary for an 850 cage. And none of these bars on the side. So you're not required to have a, a passenger door bar, you know, or this threshold bar at the bottom. But it's kind of nice for everything to be a little symmetrical and you know a couple extra tubes isn't adding much weight this is a chromoly uh, 083 wall inch and 5 8 cage you know adding these two bars here you know and this dash bar the value of of the strength that you're gaining is is worth more than a couple extra pounds so, so we integrated the seat mount why was that ed why was that yeah. uh the floors aren't the best in this car <laughs> the car is ancient Bro, besides the the hole for the tranny, I can see daylight coming through. Yeah, there might of... be some Flintstone stuff happening. It's actually gotten worse. No, well, I mean, it's you know these Kirky seats are are really cool seats. Um, they're very accessible, you know, and they're it's a good safe seat. But it's just nice to have it um, mounted to the cage and not just uh, bolted to the floor. Can you actually bolt to the floor? You can, but actually for the 850 cage, you can't, it, right? It uh, has to be on an 850 car. It has to be you know, connected back to yeah. the cage. So this is ran all the way across and supported behind the driver. So, you know, if a passenger seat does go in this car one day, there's a good secure spot to mount it to. Harness bar is set, you know, for, for John's seating position and where the seat's mounted. So this will change on every car. Every car, every seat, every uh, driver. Uh, so it's best to have, you know, somebody land this harness bar in the correct spot. You could have issues with that because if your harness is in the wrong angle where it's either too low or too high, you can get all the way out to the track and the, and the tech inspector is going to say, you know, you can't go out because there's too much angle in your seat belts or too little or whatever the case may be. So, uh, so this is measured properly for, for John's seating position and the seat. So back here, you know, these are the D bars, which it's a letter D in the rule book and they go diagonally there. And again, we added an extra bar going across the main hoop. It's, you know, just adding a little more strength, you know, from, from left to right, a good place to land these D bars too. And the rear diagonals go back to the frame in the rear. And that pretty much wraps up the inside of the car. So, you know, the 55 Chevy has a frame underneath. Uh, when you mount these cages to the floor, you know, you're only, you know, as strong as the floor is or those body mounts that it's sitting on. So we're required to return the bottom of this plate back to the frame. So this is, you know, all four corners up front here are all returned back to the frame and bolted. So you could take the body off at some point if you wanted to. Nah. 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 We're not doing that. <laughs> nah. So, yeah, I mean, we're... We're really happy. The cage came out really well. The fit's really nice and and you know NHRA approves. They gave us our sticker and we're ready to go racing. No, oh, awesome. Actually, Ed, you did better than that. You killed it. This cage is awesome. It looks beautiful. I don't actually want to paint it. I kinda wanna leave it as is, but yeah, I don't know. We'll see. I have to put clear over it. You did a awesome job on this dude. I know it wasn't uh, the most glamorous. No, it wasn't like your Lambos you got showing up. <laughs> no, it's all good, man. This is cool. I've always been a fan of these gassers. Uh, hopefully I won't be too far behind you with one of these. Oh, sick. Yours right probably on. be nicer than mine. <laughs> Thanks, Ed.